Hey, what's up, SAS Masters? My name's George, and if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're wondering what I use to record my screen, or maybe you're just looking for a screen recorder. Now, heads up, the software that I use is only available for Mac. So if you're a Windows user, I recommend you head out and check out Camtasia. I'll leave that link in the description. Now, what I use is ScreenFlow. It's one of the most professional ways to edit your screen recorder on Mac. Now, you're probably saying right now, why would I buy something when I could just do it free with QuickTime? You know, I can record the screen and I'm done. Well, you have a whole lot of options with ScreenFlow. With QuickTime, all you could do is just record the screen or part of a screen, and that's about it. You can't do anything with the recording. And with ScreenFlow, you have all the options that you would get with an editor. I'm talking about splitting, cutting, um, just adding transitions at the end, adding titles in the beginning, blurring some stuff, for example, a password or an email, and you get a whole lot of, a lot of options with ScreenFlow. That makes it one of the best screen recorders out there. Now, enough talk about this. Let's actually check it out. So I'm going to record my screen with QuickTime because I just want to show you how ScreenFlow works because I'm going to do a recording and I'm going to show you how I actually edit and show you some quick stuff on it. So let's jump over to my screen and check it out. All right, guys, this is ScreenFlow side. And if you guys would like to support me, please consider using that link in the description. It gives me a small commission and it won't cost you a single cent more. So ScreenFlow only costs $129 and what you pay is for version, right? So right now it's version nine of ScreenFlow and you can use it forever. When you upgrade to version 10, when they come out, it's only like a small fee. I think it's like $29 to upgrade if you want. If you're happy with that version and it works fine, then just don't upgrade, right? So, like I said, it's only available for Mac, so heads up. And if you're using Windows, I'll leave the link to the description for the Camtasia one, which is the one I recommend if you're using Windows. So, enough talk about that. Let's actually open ScreenFlow and show you how it works. Right now, I'm recording with QuickTime because I need to record the screen and show you how ScreenFlow works. So, let me open ScreenFlow settings. So, it's configure recording. And you can record the screen. So, you can see right here, color screen, and record video if I want or if I don't. Now I can add a camera and I can select a camera from the drop down. I can also select the microphone. So right now by default, it's using my Mac microphone, but if I have an external one, I can also select it here. So I'm going to start recording while I talk. And one of the things you get with this and not with free QuickTime is that you get a timer to get started and you can set the time that you want and just wait for a bit for that to record. Let me show you how the upgrade works. So this is the upgraded version when you want to upgrade to the next one. So like I said before, um, right now it's in version nine. So when ScreenFlow 10 comes out, it's going to change. All right. So if you had, for example, ScreenFlow 8 and you want to jump to nine, it's only $39 and it goes so on and so forth, depending on the version that you're on. So, okay, let's say we're ready. I'm done recording. I've showed you what I want on my screen and I'm going to stop it. So I'm going to stop it right here. All right. And it opens up the editor. Now, right here, I have a lot of things I can do. For example, I got my main track right here and I have the screen track. So for example, my the, the camera and the screen. If I want to remove the camera, I can delete it. If I want to just bring it back, I can move around the camera right here, the camera view, right? And I have the options here on the right. So on the bottom, I got timeline on the right. I have options. So I'll click right here while selecting this one, right? So depending on the one you select are the options that you're going to have on the right. I could scale it if I want. So for example, if I want to make it smaller, I could do some cropping. So let's just say, you know what? I don't need as much right here. I can do that cropping there. Also on the top, which is fine because that's what it has. I can add some reflection. So there's a little reflection there. I can expand it more, less reflection, more. I can round off the corners, which is something I like because rounding off the corners, whoops, gives it a little bit more of a professional touch so it doesn't look so like corner straight. I can add a drop shadow to it. So for example, a drop shadow right there. I can add some offset to it depending how much I want just to give it a little bit more professional stuff. Controls right here. So color controls, saturation, brightness and contrast, video filters. So for example, I am using a green screen so I can add the chroma right here. So I can add a chroma and it's adding the wrong one. So I'm going to select the green. Okay. And I added some chroma right there. Now there's a lot of fine tuning to that. It's just, just not, it's not straightforward, right? I need to select the right green and all that good stuff. So that's just the basics, right? We can go more like, for example, the volume right here, I can lower it up it. I can mute the audio. I can use ducking. 
So what ducking does is that, for example, if I add a music track down inside of here, whenever I am silent, the music is gonna go up. And when I talk, the music is gonna go down. So that is ducking. So that's, that's pretty cool. Even, for example, on Final Cut Pro, that's not there. So it's pretty cool that they have that. And you got the audio mix options, effects like echo and a bunch of stuff right there. I won't get into that. We have video motion, which is more for the screen. So you can see all this is grayed out because this is the camera, it's not the screen. And I will select that in a bit. All right, so enough for that one. Now let's select the screen. What can I do with the screen? Well, one of the things I do first before I jump into that, I go into my file document settings and I set it to, for example, 4K, 1080p or whatever you're gonna set. And that will cut it up to what I want, right? So in this case, I'll just select everything. Well, I'll leave it like that. Uh, there we go. So now it's the normal size, which is 16 by nine. I think that's what YouTube uses. And that's how I set that. Okay, so that's one of the things I said. Then I can also go to audio, but there's no volume on that. It's just on the camera. Um, I can do the video motion and I can add some action. So for example, let's just say, I'm right here. Now let's move this guy over here. Something that I would do is jump it over here. And there, now we have actions available. So durations, I can add the effect, so like spring and pulse. And you can see that it, when I clicked on action, it added this right here. So let me zoom this. And this is the action that it will add. So for example, there's no action there because there's not there's nothing like, uh, there's not a piece there, right? But let's just say I wanted to do some options on the screen recorder. I can show the mouse pointer or I can hide it. I can add an effect to that mouse pointers, for example, a radar. So that means that every time I click on something, it's gonna show, let me see if it shows. No, I clicked around right there. All right, so you're gonna see that little effect. I clicked on that, right? So you saw that effect right there. You can change the color, duration, the blur, the animation, it can be invert. You can shoot an attention effect. So for example, see that right there? Uh, this is the version. Every time I click, so it's like, hey, here's the mouse. Don't lose it just in case you want to do something with it. Now, there's a lot of things I don't use, like that attention effect, and there's more effects that you can find, but it's just a matter of checking them out. Now, one of the things I do use a lot is the hide. Let me show you right there. So let's just say right here, right? So there, I'll do an action. Oh, not that one. It's this one over here. Oh, so the callow call out my bad okay so this is something I really use a lot let's just say I want to blur out a spot that's a password or something like that this is what I would use so in this case it's the forehand I'll use square I'll remove the opacity and I'll up the blur and then I will select the section so let's just say I want to blur the prices right let's just say those were emails something really sensitive I don't know where we want now when I go play let me remove this. When I play this, it's gonna blur out as soon as this blue box starts. Well, now it's yellow. And let me click away. Let me hit play. All right. So if you had, for example, screen blurred, and, you and it's gonna turn off. It's only $39 and Boom, it and it's off. Now I can stretch this if I want. So for example, if I click on it, I can stretch it just because it might last longer or maybe I started at the wrong place. And this is something I use a whole lot because I need to blur out the sensitive stuff. like. Sometimes emails, passwords, IP addresses, um, just information that I don't want people to see when I'm recording the screen. Well, this helps me do that. And you could do it the opposite also. Maybe you wanna blur out the outside and just highlight a box. Well, you could do it with this. You just do it the opposite right here. You can zoom up, zoom up and borders, outlines, shadows, and a whole lot of stuff. A touch call out, we can add some annotations. So if you need to draw, you would add an annotation right here. Just see how that added right there. And let's say that box there and this. Let me click away and it's gonna boom. It could show an annotation like that, right? You have other options like squares, boxes, and all that good stuff. We have some titles also. Let me add a title around over here. So for example, let's add a title. Here's the title. I can say, um, check this out, right? That's how the title would be, and I want it over here on the left. It could be like, hey, subscribe, or something like that. There we go. There we go. Let me actually remove the volume on this. There we go. Okay, so now we have the title available, and we can add another one if we want. We have the fonts, we got a lot of stuff. We got some animation, you can remove it. You can outline, key, backdrop, build in animations. 
um, let's just say we want to add a, we just want to split this. All right, so let's just say um, the video ended before, right? So I'll just drag it like this, boom. And that's how I drag it. If I need to cut, for example, I'll use the command key um, number letter T, right? And that'll split it. I can add something right there. I can space it. I can add this right here. It'll automatically add a transition there. There's something there and I'll trans, ah, something really ugly, but yeah, that works like that. Now, if I add it to add a transition at the end, I'll right click right here and I can add a transition, which is add a starting transition or an ending transition. And that will add it there. So for example, that worked on my camera because that's what I have it. But if I also want to add it to my screen recording, I can do it like that. So add and transition. There's a whole lot of things you can do. Basically, that's stuff that I use. I mean, I use cut, I use some blurring, I use the ducking, I use the effects to the chroma key for the camera and all that kind of good stuff. But there's a whole lot of things that you could do with ScreenFlow. I know most of you, just like me, you're not gonna use everything because you probably don't need it, but it's there. It's a professional software to record your screen and then edit it. So it's not just like QuickTime where you record the screen and that's about it, right? You can't do anything. You have to go into another editor and like cut and do whatever you want with titles and all that good stuff. So at the end of the day, in my opinion, $129 is well worth it to have a professional screen recorder. You have a whole lot of options and one of the best ones is like you can blur stuff that's really sensitive, which is something you can't do on, on most of the other ones that are free or kind of like that stuff. So it's a good option if you want to record your screen and obviously if you have a Mac. Now Camtasia for Windows works the same, but everything's like different, right? In different places, but it kind of does the same stuff. And that's available for Windows and Mac, so that's available on both. But I think it's more expensive, so ScreenFlow would be a better option, and it works fantastic. I mean, I can't recommend it more than, than because I use it, right? That's what I use, and it works great. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you liked this video, and if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. If you can help me out with a like, and most of all, if you plan to buy it, please consider using that link in the description because it helps me out with a small commission so I can keep making these videos for you guys. Well, thank you for watching. My name's George, and this is SaaS Master. I'll see you guys later.